Cool. Thanks, Liana. So welcome, everyone, to our um, January uh, open meeting of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Um, we've had a sort of a, a, a hiatus um, in these uh, meetings. Uh, the last one we had was in September, on September 30, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been a few months. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the, the holidays were on and uh, it was hard to, to schedule this. So uh, we're finally here and um, I'm happy to, to have this um, meeting once again and hopefully we'll stay on track for the two months uh, schedule. Um, without further ado, I'd like to invite everyone to, to say a few words about themselves, to introduce uh, themselves to us. Um, and I'll start with Let's say, uh, Liana, I'm going top down for my list. So uh, for now, that's Liana. Hi, everyone. I am Liana Davis. I'm from the United States, and I am uh, here as a fellow board member of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. And I also serve as the Chief Programs Officer for the Wiki Education Foundation, which is the organization that runs the education program in the United States and Canada. Um, and Susanna's next for me on my list, so I will pass it off to her. Hi, everyone. I am Susanna from Armenia. I, I am also a board member of Wikimed, uh, Wiki Education User Group. Also, I am um, president of Wikimedia Armenia. Uh, and Okay, let's go to Andy. Hi, I, uh, I've only just rejoined you. What was the question? Just a brief introduction about oh, you. Okay, I think most of you know me, but hello everyone. Uh, I've been a Wikimedian in residence with a number of institutions going back to 2011. Uh, and currently with the university in, in Coventry, Coventry University. Uh, as their Wikimedia in residence with a, a strong emphasis on using uh, Wikipedia and its sister projects for what we call authentic assessment, uh, where students write articles and then get assessed instead of writing an essay. I've run similar programs with the Polytechnic of Milan and with a consortium of EU universities a couple of years ago as well. Cool, thanks. Uh, moving on to Clara. Uh, hi, everyone. I think. I only have met Andy once in Warsaw <laughs> uh, uh, when I was at a Glam Wiki um, movement. So I'm a new one in Wikimedia Poland uh, and I'm an educational specialist from September. And before that I was a museum worker. So for many years I was involved in Glam. So now it's a new, new way for me, new path dealing with education in Poland, especially. Okay. Cool. Welcome to the movement and welcome to our group. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on to Andrews. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrews and I'm speaking from Ghana. I'm currently project manager for um, Wikimedia Education pro uh, Program, Gr Wikimedia Education Greenhouse Program. And the name of my the group or the project is Growing Open and Eco-Friendly Skills for the Youth, GOES. Uh, I'll speak about how Wikimedia projects can be used outside the classroom to create social impact, uh, looking at areas such as Industry 4.0 Skills, Acquisition, uh, Circular Economy, and Zero Hunger. Um, I'll also present on how GOES through community school farms is creating social impact in Ghana and the global effect and how various institutions and individuals can support the project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, the next one is Gedeon. Hello, everybody. My name is Gerion. I'm from Germany. And in uh, education, I'm a Wikipedia lecturer. In, as, to give you some news, in three weeks, we're doing a Wikilos Parliament again at the German Bundestag, at the German Parliament, and giving seven uh, Wikipedia a workshop there for parliamentarians um, in Berlin. Um, that's news for me, and I look forward to our chat today. 
Cool. Thank you. Uh, next one, Mina. Hi, everyone. I'm Mina. I'm from Greece. Um, I, 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 some of you know me. Uh, I've been, I was a teacher for 13 years in secondary education, so I've done lots of Wikipedia and education programs. Uh, all ages from uh, uh, 8 to 60. So uh, since uh, September, I've resigned from my job and uh, I've been doing uh, other things. My main interest right now is uh, social entrepreneurship and I'm attending a MOOC and I'm really interested in uh, uh, learning. I, I was really interested in the um, description, apart from the Wikidata and all the um, uh, education projects, I've, I've done Wikidata in, in teaching too, is um, how to integrate social impact into the Wikipedia, the Wikimedia movement. So that's my new thing that I'm doing right now. That sounds really interesting. Thank you. Um, all right, next one is Obi. Or OBY. Obi, if you're trying to speak, you're muted. If not, we can come back to you later. All right, Sam. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Sam. Um, well, I do a lot of things, but uh, I'm from Nigeria and in context of Wikipedia education, Wikimedia education, I'm the outreach coordinator for the Wikimedia user group in Nigeria. And I've been involved a lot in a lot of education projects, especially in, in relation to wiki clubs, which are, you know, uh, which are groups of uh, Wikipedia fan clubs and uh, Wikipedia groups in different tertiary institutions across Nigeria. And that's currently what we manage and do for Wikipedia education right now. And these clubs also do a lot of projects that are related to Wikipedia, that are related to Wikimedia in Nigeria. Thank you. Cool, great. Um, and Husmedin, or however you pronounce this, Hello. Hello. I am Jose Medin, Turkey. I am from Tunisia. Welcome. I am working, I am working mainly uh, about Wikipedia education and Wikimedia in context of Medinapedia Sfax project. But now I am shifting my interest to Wikidata education. Great. Thank you. Um, can we try once again with OB? And how to use education in online courses. I'm sorry, Husamedin, you're breaking up a bit. You hear me now? Not too well. Ah. So what I, ha I have said is that I used to uh, work on Wikipedia education, but now I shifted my interest to Wikidata education. Okay, we heard you now, thank you. <laughs> so that's all. I am mainly working on applications uh, of Wikidata in education. In courses and something like that. Mm -hmm. Great. That sounds interesting. Um, and I think this is everyone. Um, and yeah, me for last. Uh, I'm the chair of Wikimedia, Wikipedia and Education User Group. Um, I'm Philip from Wikimedia Serbia also. Uh, not, the pres not the chair of that chapter anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm mostly involved with uh, education stuff in Serbia. Uh, in recent years, mostly working on professional development seminars um, for uh, high school teachers and, and elementary school teachers. Um, also, hello. Hello. 
Yes, Obi, we haven't heard from you. Hello, good evening everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, my name is Obi. I'm from Nigeria. Uh, I've done a lot of work in Wikipedia, but not really wiki education. I've done uh, something on Wiktionary, Igbo Wiktionary with my students. I'm a teacher by profession. I've, um, I've, already, I've also done uh, some edits with Igbo Wikipedia. Now I'm running uh, the, I'm currently involved with the Wikipedia Education Greenhouse Project. That's how far, and I'm still learning. That's how far I've gone for Wikipedia Education. Well, great. It's, it's so nice to have you here. Um, we're always thank you very much. to newer people in the movement, and I'm glad you decided to join us. Okay. All right. That's it for introductions, I believe. Um, I know for a fact that Shani will join us a bit later because she's on a different call, and uh, Joao as well from uh, the board. Uh, but we can move on to uh, our next topic, which is updates from the user group. Um, I can give you some brief updates. Um, well, and as, in order not to be too monotonous, um, I'm going to ask uh, Liana to, to <laughs> join me afterwards to, to just sort of fill out everything that I missed. Um, but in a gist, uh, the most, most like the biggest thing that we've been preoccupied in the past months was organizing the uh, Wikipedia and education um, or education Wikipedia, we still haven't settled on the name, conference, which will be organized by the user group in coordination with Wikimedia Serbia in Belgrade uh, in the first week of, weekend of October. I keep forgetting the, the, the exact date, but- October 9th through 11th. Yes. Uh, October 9 to 11. That's what the the, the idea is. Um, we are still in the uh, uh, proposal draft, yeah, grant proposal uh, stage. So we're we're drafting the the grant proposal and we're in the final stages of that. Um, we're gonna going to publish it in the next few days since the deadline is Sunday, uh, the coming Sunday, um, and we're going to. Um, yeah, you're, you're, gonna, you're going to be able to see the, the grant proposal soon and maybe give some comments on it uh, or endorsements. Um, so yeah, we, we've been uh, busy getting the, the, the venue set up and the hotel and uh, doing the budget and, and all the preparatory work. So that has been our focus in the past uh, month or a few months or so. Uh, we've already sort of finalize the the logo and the slogan and um a lot of other aspects so so yeah that's for the uh, for the conference uh we're also planning a tech needs survey that's going to be launched in early february so uh keep an eye on that it's going to be just a, a relatively brief survey that uh, has the intention of um getting input from as many community members as possible regarding the needs for technology improvements or additions uh, to our ecosystem so that we can uh, see what uh, education programs are missing in terms of um, tech or tech tools, I guess. Um, apart from that, we've also finalized our bylaws, which should be available on our portal on Meta. So the, the user group now finally has bylaws so we can <laughs> uh, function more, <clears throat> more uh, uh, let's say or organized in a more organized fashion or more professionally quote unquote so uh, that's also quite new um and liana you can join in <laughs> you can jump in right now yeah i just say the the only other thing would be thank you to all of you who participated in our community engagement survey around the conference um krishna distributed that in late december and we got a really great overwhelming response um, to that survey which was super helpful in um, putting together a grant proposal for the wikimedia foundation to um, 
to get the, um, the conference grant going. Um, I believe the timeline for the conference grant, Philip, correct me if I'm wrong here, is, um, is they will let us know in April, is that true? Uh, hopefully, yeah, but by early April we'll have the decision and then we can start announcing things more formally and, and publicly. Yeah, so, so once we have that sort of decision from the Wikimedia Foundation, we will be able to um, give information about the program and scholarships and all of those kind of things. But, um, you know, we're definitely hopeful that we will get this grant and, you know, are actively planning the conference um, as, as we speak here. Um, I think, are there any kind of questions from anyone who's joined us about the conference or our tech needs survey? Probably nobody has questions about our bylaws, but um, we're also happy to, to answer questions about those as well. Andy asks, what was the conference well, date again? The um, tentatively October 9th through 11th, 2020. No, and is there a reason why the, sorry, you can go ahead. No, I wanted to just ask uh, if there was any reason why the, the conference dates changed. I mean, I remember last year it happened around um, April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is there any reason for that? Oh. Yeah, so, so the last conference was organized by the Basque user group rather than by the Wikipedia and education user group. So we were just getting started at that point and the Basque group had been working on planning the conference for a long time. Um, and so this was sort of the first cycle of the Wikimedia Foundation's grant making um, proposal that we could um, apply for in the sort of time frame that we were working in. So um, the way the, their grant cycles for conferences work, we um, have to submit by, as Philip said, this weekend in order to have a conference that takes place during fall 2020. So that's where the sort of time frame came from. Yeah, so to, to expand a bit more on that, um, we, we, dis we started discussing about organizing a conference back in <clears throat> August or September, I think. Um, so by then it was pretty late to apply for the uh, grants that were that had a deadline in September or early October. So that would be for the uh, first quarter for for the for the first half of 2020. So uh, we just didn't have enough time to prepare the grant and uh, and and everything else for uh, that time. So we decided to sort of wait a bit and and um, apply for this other round, which is. Um, in the, as, as Liana says, um, fall uh, of, uh, or, or winter of 2020. So we decided on October. Um, I, I can say that uh, I'm happy because of uh, that, uh, because we are, we'll start our um, activities with teachers uh, in spring and summer. And then on, in October, I can tell you something about like evaluation of this. So you are. <laughs> um, right. I, think, I think it's a very good date as well. Uh, I was already raising the question um, a week ago that we have the CE meeting, the Central Eastern European meeting three weeks earlier and it's in Orit, uh, North Macedonia, which is just 400 kilometers or like 250 miles south of Belgrade. Uh, so lo lots of Wikipedia Wikipedians who are going to uh, attend the uh, education um, conference will be at the CE meetings, which means they will be in the vicinity and the area already, which would cost lots of travel time and and uh, would be good for our eco uh, ecological impact if we have much less flights like that. Um, but then I was told that it's so difficult to find a date because there are other conferences around this time as well. Yeah, I can, I can say we've definitely spent a lot of time sort of as a board discussing sort of which dates would work best given, um, you know, other conference, you know, movement conferences. And, you know, we also felt like we couldn't tie anything too exclusively to one regional conference because we really want to make sure the Wikipedia and Education Conference is a global conference and welcomes participants from 
um, diverse user groups across um, the entire world. And so, you know, trying to tie it to one particular regional event, you know, helps the folks from that particular event. But, you know, we wanted to, to balance something where we could get, you know, both information from, um, you know, from, from people all over the world um, to participate in the conference as well as, you know, helping, um, Yes, not only user groups, affiliates as well, organizations and, you know, organized educational efforts that are not tied even with affiliates, but with individual Wikimedians as well. Yeah, we, we discussed about maybe tying it to the C um, meeting, which will happen in late September in uh, Macedon North, North Macedonia. Uh, but we decided not to be too close to that because some, to some, for some people it might make sense, but then again, to most people who are not from the sea region, it might not be too useful. So we decided to, to actually uh, intentionally keep it a bit farther from the, from the sea conference. So going forward, is it going to be this date? Is it going to be in October? Because I, Sorry, I'm, I was thinking that it would be okay to get a date that c can ensure uh, continuity. So I'm thinking, I know it's not happening this year at Wikidata Conference, but next year, Wikidata Conference is going to happen, for instance. So would that require that if there's another education conference happening next year, you'd have to shift it to another date? Uh, or, or it's also possible that it doesn't matter because conferences don't have to like, be tied to a specific period, right? Right. I mean, we, we don't have any sort of month or, or part of year set up as the, the future <laughs> uh, time for, the, for all these conferences. We just, uh, for this uh, particular conference, we, we thought that this, was be, this would be the, the best possible um, solution and again, it, it also ties into the the geography uh, of the of the host place, right? So sometimes it just you know or making conferences in in Central Europe in or, or Eastern Europe in, in December is not you know useful, uh, but then maybe in Brazil next year or, or whatever, uh, maybe uh, more not northern winter would be better i guess you know you never know with these things so uh we don't know anything about the conference in 2021 that's too far away but uh for now um this was just a, a short term plan and, and short term decision so uh we're not com uh, committing ourselves to always hold it in in october thank you Welcome. thank you for setting that up <laughs> Um, do you have any other questions that we can answer at this point? If not, I'll, I'd like to invite oh, I you. Uh, sorry, not I have, me. but I had to oh. unmute it myself. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, um, so, uh, do you know already that, um, the, the call for proposals for this conference, the time of this? So, uh, we know that we, probably won't uh, announce it before we get the the official confirm confirmation from the mm -hmm. WMF that the conference is going to be held because we don't want to you know for for any reason it, if it does not get approved by the WMF then we can't you know send it, uh, oh, okay. it. But, but yeah w once that's hap once that happens uh, we'll try to form the, the committees, uh, the scholarship committee, the program committee, and, and some others, um, during the time we wait for the response from the WMF. So by the time we get the decision, we can kickstart the, uh, the process. And, and I, I don't expect it to, to start after, let's say, May, early May, because it, we do need some time to set it up. But yeah, I'm hopeful that early spring we'll, we'll get some, uh, something going on. OK, thank you. So um, just a question, will there be an opportunity for um, like major, I wouldn't say major, but then uh, certain projects within the Wikimedia education community to be highlighted on, the, on that day? And um, you'll be reaching out to those particular groups, right? 
I'm not sure I, I understood the question. Okay, so I am sure that there are certain projects Uh, with that we can in certain area. I'm, I'm sorry, Andrews. I, I think you just got cut off a bit. There will be, there will be, um, there will be allowed, not allowed, but then there will be um, sponsored to attend the pro program um, or this conference. We will, no. I think, if, if I'm understanding your question correctly, we will have scholarships available pending funding from the Wikimedia Foundation, and it will, you know, like most Wikimedia conferences, be an open program um, proposal thing where, you know, everyone who's interested in giving talks submits talks, and um, the program committee will evaluate them and put the schedule together based on that. So, you know, we certainly want it to be open to a diverse range of groups from all over the world and you know we've budgeted for scholarships to you know to hopefully offer the ability from people all over the globe to come to belgrade so one of the considerations we looked into was um was was in particular the visa sort of accessibility of different uh, places and serbia was one of the more welcoming places so um, we in part we part we picked Belgrade as the place in part because it has um, such a welcoming visa process, and you know we're hopeful that we will be able to bring people in from all over for the conference. Does it? Do? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just gave a link in the chat box uh, for the grant proposal draft and. Uh, more specifically to the budget, which is already in there. Um, it's more or less uh, set. So you can see that we have devoted about, um, yeah, more than $42,000 for the travel costs. So we intend on bringing a lot of people uh, through scholarships um, and hopefully uh, we'll get even more than um, 70 that we planned. So, so yeah, that's the, uh, we, we do black, plan on broad participation um, and uh, hopefully from um, from all corners of the world. Okay, unless there are any more questions right now, I, I'd like to give the opportunity for the people who have joined in, in the meantime to, to just give us a brief, some brief introductions about themselves, like brief, um, uh, a few sentences. So um, I'd like to ask Joao to start first. Okay, so hi everyone. So first of all, sorry for being late. And so I'm Joao from Brazil. I'm part of the board of the Wikipedia Education User Group and also the chair of the Brazilian affiliate to the Wikimedia movement. And I'm also a university professor and very excited to have this broader meeting with the community and the members of several affiliates. Thank you. Shani, do you want to say a few words? Oh, um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Shani Evenstein. I'm an educator from Israel and a Wikimedian. Um, and I think I'm going to talk a bit more later on. So let's move on. All right. Um, also, we have Justice. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Justice uh, from Wikimedia Ghana User Group. Um, I, I lead, um, sometimes lead education projects here and there. Thank you. And I saw Ursula for a bit, but I guess she decided to leave. So, um, that brings us to our next topic, which is the featured speakers. So in lieu of that, I'd like to invite Shani to uh, give her presentation. Okay, awesome. Uh, so let me just share my screen and we can begin. 
I just need to figure out how to do it here. <laughs> Give me a sec. I think there is a green uh, Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. And the presentation? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so let me just try to enlarge it. Is that better now? Can you see it a bit bigger? Awesome. Great. So um, hi, everyone again. Um, I'm actually very excited to be here. Uh, I'm one of the founding members of the Wikipedia and Education um, user group, and um, I've recently stepped down because I'm now on the board of the uh, Wikimedia Foundation um, Board of Trustees. And as I said, I'm an educator, and when um, the board actually approached me to, to talk today a bit about what I'm doing in education, um, it was obvious to us that I need to speak about Wikidata because that's, that has been the focus of what I've been doing for the past few years. Uh, but I also thought long and hard about what to do and how to make this presentation more than, hey, this is what I do in Israel at my university, but rather maybe create ki some kind of resource that can help others. Um, so um, let me just um, delve right into it. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see if I can make it work again. Nothing happens. I don't know why it's happening. Um, I think you're on your last slide. You can just go to the first. You are absolutely right. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in the last slide, but here I am. So let's try again. Oh, this works now. Um, so so this is a bit about me, um, just for those who don't know me, I know some of you, but um, actually there are a few new names in the call and this is really exciting. So I work and study at the Tel Aviv University and teach at the Tel Aviv University. Um, I'm um, currently a PhD student um, doing my research about Wikidata and I've had a lot of different roles in the Wiki Media Foundation in the Wikimedia movement and actually the free knowledge um, movement for for many years what I did today is create some kind of um, presentation that will be divided into three parts the last part of it is actually what what I I specifically do in Israel uh, but hopefully before a bit of background to those who are completely new to it so just before um, before we begin, can I see some virtual hands to how many of you have been already incorporating Wikidata in any type of educational or academic setting? Well, how many of you have yeah, been doing this? I've, I've been doing a little. I have. I have also. So who hasn't? Who has never done okay. anything related I have. to... Oh, sorry. Good. Yeah, Garyon and Mina, I know, have been doing something, and anyone else who hasn't done anything but is thinking about it, don't be shy. It's all about you guys and ladies. Oh, two participants. I am, I am, I'm yet to include it in, in the project, so um, I'm including the ghost project for this year. Awesome. So hopefully... I have this... to, but I'm still thinking mm. about it too. So you both wanted to, but never got a chance. So I'm I hoping have, yes. also and started something. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and we have Husimda um, in Turkey joining, uh, oh, raising hand, okay. You've also done stuff for sure. Um, I, I know that you have um, and interesting things too. And it's quite awesome because we actually have many educators uh, in this call, we have been incorporating Wikidata into, um, into some kind of curriculum. Um, it, it could be university or school, it doesn't matter, but stuff has, has, has been going on in the world in different places for long, for some time now, for a few years. And I'll try to give a, a bit of a um, um, background to it and then tell you about what I'm specifically doing. And hopefully it can help you do the same thing in your setting, in your own places in the world. So uh, yeah, a part one is a, a very short introduction, just 
giving you some kind of uh, background to those who are completely new. And I'm, I'm curious if you recognize uh, the man on the left here. And there's a hint on the shirt, of course. Does anyone recognize the man on the left? You can, you can speak, speak up if you can, if you want. Hello, <laughs> can you hear me? One of them is Tim Berners-Lee, right? Tim Berners-Lee. Yeah, Tim Berners-Lee, you got that right. So we have on the left Tim Berners-Lee and um, on the right, uh, Winton Curve, who actually invented the internet and not confused with the web. Um, and I, I love this picture. And th the reason that I brought Tim Berners-Lee to, to this presentation, and basically to almost every presentation that I give about Wikidata, is that we owe a great deal to this visionary um, man who's actually still alive and he's awesome and amazing and doing still uh, innovative stuff. But what he did is he helped, it, it was already in 94, so way before the internet as we know it today, that he started to talk about this thing called the semantic web. And what we've seen happen in, in the internet, if I have to, to really narrow it down in the past few years, the internet um, and the web, which is sort of an app on the, in, in the internet, the web has been going through different phases or this different transformation or different versions, if you will. The first one, um, what is called Web 1, is basically only uh, big companies that presented you know, their companies, their, um, their content to users, and all users could do is basically consume that information and that's it. At the end of the 90s, the beginning of the, the um, 2000s, um, the web went through its first, the, 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 the first big revolution or evolution rather. And we had suddenly websites allowing users to contribute material, to contribute content, right? And this is the internet as most of us know it today, right? Websites like, well, Wikipedia and uh, what else? YouTube, Facebook. Basically, it's very hard to, to find today um, websites that do not um, allow its users to participate in the creation of knowledge and share information. So this is web two. This is what we most, um, with what most of us live in and know how to. Um, this is the, these are the websites that most of us know, and the third evolution of the web happened with web, what's called web three, or sometimes it's called semantic web, or sometimes it's called just linked data, um, is the third uh, important evolution of the web. And some say, you know, we are already living in web four, but I'll leave that to, to, <laughs> to a different um, discussion. But what I wanna focus on is, is this semantic web and this, this whole idea um, was a vision of Tim Berners-Lee way back in the in the 90s and he describes this web right and just imagine that on top of the web as you know it there is another layer of data and we can access this layer of data and actually make sense of it and so this is basically a game changer and yeah that's the evolution of the web from from a web of documents to a web of that both humans and machines can can actually access and make make sense of these huge amounts of information that are that is you know available out there so wikidata plays basically a very important role in at least to, in my mind in this ecosystem of of web3 and it has to be an ecosystem right it can be just wikidata but wikidata basically um succeeds in realizing this vision this dream of the semantic web as Tim Berners-Lee describes it for the first time. Humanity has tried to, to make it happen before. It succeeded in a small scale, but never in a scale like Wikidata. Now it has to be a network of, of, um, of websites doing this, not only us, but this is why Wikidata is so important in that ecosystem. 
So first, it's the first biggest semantic web platform that humanity has created, and it's free. And, you know, in recent years, it's very hard to, to be a digital citizen without hearing these buzzwords like um, big data, right? And what else? AI, artificial intelligence, and data science, and all of these big words, but none of it is really, is really available unless you have data and or rather structured linked data like Wikidata has. And so Wikidata is so important because it's the biggest um, semantic web platform that humanity ever created and it's free. Unlike other companies that might collect data on its users, on us basically, but have some kind of agenda, Wikidata is doing it for humanity um, and it's multilingual and computers and humans can read it and it connects different databases in the world. So it has, it has, um, it's doing already a lot and we can query it. We can ask questions and get specific answers to, to what it does. But mostly, um, I think that it basically changes the interactions between humans and knowledge. And as such, it has a, a huge potential to be used as a learning platform. And before I move on, um, I want to know if there are any questions or has this been clear to everyone? There is chat, but I'm unable to see it. Let's try to see it. Oh yeah, people actually recognized it. Um, so everything clear? Can I, can I move on to, the, to, to give you some examples? Because it's, I'm sure it's interesting, but a bit theoretical unless you've been actually doing it for some time. Okay, silence for me means I'm moving on. So I'm gonna go very, very briefly um, on these general examples that I've curated mostly for the newbies here. Um, and these are examples of how we are actually using Wikidata. And although the focus here is not necessarily of using Wikidata in educational settings, I believe that these examples um, showcase or demonstrate how we might be able to use it in educational settings. So the first is the Met. I'm again gonna, um, I can share the presentation with whoever wants. Uh, so just ping me and, and let me know and I, I will share the presentation, which has links and uh, more information if you want. But uh, I believe most of you know that we have Wikipedia in resident at the Met and that they released a lot of data. And what you can see here is people playing a game, a simple game that's called Depict. And they, they, they're shown a picture from the um, website, from the database of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And they, can, they need to tell, do you see a tree? Do you see a vase? And everything, every single click that they make is becoming a statement in Wikidata that helps to, um, to better describe the item or the picture in, in their uh, database. So this is a fun way or something fun that we can do with kids, actually really small kids, to help expose them to the idea of, hey, we need to describe the world around us and we need to do it in a structured way for us to be able to then ask questions about it. So that's one example. I'm gonna move on. And if you want more, there, there are stuff to read about that. And the Cleveland Museum, if you click on um, the link here, which I'm not gonna do that now, um, you can see a really interesting way of exploring um, their, all the images that they released in all based on, on Wikidata queries and it's really fun. And another way to explore, and this comes from, uh, from the UK, um, this is the Astro Astrolabe Explorer. It's an example that I love to give because I think it's a proof of concept. Um, the person who did it is Martin Poulter from our community, and he created a, a website that is solely based on, you know, on queries. You can ask questions, and you, you, in, in this, he wanted to tell the story of Astrolabes, which are old navigation devices. Uh, there was a big collection of them in, some of the, in, in one institution that he was collaborating with. And he wanted to show that collection and tell its story and allow people to really 
navigate the information in a fun and visual way. So this is uh, what he did. Everything you see here, if you click on the people um, uh, tab, you'll also get all the people who created these astrolabes and all of it is generated automatically. So again, a proof of concept, you can take it with any collection, you can do it with anything at all and create a website based on Wikidata queries and you know explore information visually. So, so these are two examples from, from uh, GLAMS, from our work with cultural institutions. And I just wanted to say that um, Wikidata is actually helping us as a community do our wiki work better. It, help, uh, it helps us curate information in an organized way, uh, like they're doing in the sum of all paintings and other wiki, Wikidata projects. And these are great examples, again, to help us monitor what still needs to happen. You can see the same thing in Women in Red. Um, this is in English Wikipedia, but they have a list. And you can see all the red links that still need to be written. And with this nice table that, that is generated with a tool called Listeria. So this is allowing us to do, um, do our wiki work better and help curate information and see everything happening automatically. Um, I think one of the biggest strengths for Wikidata is the fact that it's helping us visualize information. And from, if you click on, on this um, link, it will bring you to a query that's already ready um, to showcase. And what I usually do in this query is show people how easy it is to basically um, change the way you visualize things. So the query is all already, all I do here when I run the query is to switch between the different visualizations from table, which is boring, to picture grid, to showing it on a map, et cetera, and showing, of course, a timeline, which is not here for some reason, but, but it's available through the query. And so suddenly it gives you the power to talk about not only what's there, but not, but, but about what's not there. Joao, you raise your hand. No, okay. Um, so, I'm sorry, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop um, the thingy that popped up. Sorry about that. So this is, this is just an example of a query showing the power of visualization of information. And you can suddenly, when you see it visualized, you can not only explore the information in different ways. This is why I'm saying it's basically changing the interaction that we have with knowledge because suddenly we can talk about the blank, uh, the white spots here on the map. And is it really that we don't have any women physicists in these parts of the world? Well, probably we do, but we, we might not uh, map them again. So it helps us to talk about um, knowledge gaps and about what's missing and about data completeness and all of these new things that the generation that grows up now needs to, to discuss. Um, moving on, I just wanted to show that it doesn't really have to be just um, it doesn't have to be just um, uh, art or you know paintings or stuff like that. It could really be anything in the world. It could be hospitals or it could be diseases and their um, uh, symptoms. And again, all of these are clickable links that will bring you to the actual thingy or genes, et cetera, et cetera. And I always give this, um, this example that happened in, in Brazil. Um, well, Joao is here, so he can probably tell you much more about it, but um, this is using a, a tool called Tabernacle to basically recreate a museum, the items that were in a specific museum in Brazil that burned down, um, all using crowdsourcing. So again, using Wikidata to, to do what Joao called data archaeology, um, which is awesome. Some more awesome stuff from Brazil is the Mbabel, which creates using Wikidata new articles or generates like a template or the beginning of articles that are missing. This is especially good for 
smaller languages and you can use the template and, and copy it to your own languages. Um, another cool example from Edinburgh, this is from the University of Edinburgh. A, a, this is a project that happened, you know, we have Ewan, uh, um, who's a Wikimedian in residence at the University of Edinburgh. And one of the things that he did at the university is they, they had a database that no one was using and no one had the money to basically maintain. Um, a, a big research project that was done at the university, they explored witches, the witch hunts um, in the 16th and 17th century. And what they did is they took all of that database and put it into Wikidata, which helped them to create this really cool thing Again, not going to click it, but you can. And it's really powerful to show to people how we can, again, tell the story of something that happened or explore history in new, visualized, exciting ways. Um, I just want to share Scolia, which really makes a big impact on people who show it um, to, to, you know, to uh, stakeholders. They usually know if it's in academic institutions, they usually know um, Google Scholar, but you can show them Scolia instead. And again, not going to click it because that's not the focus today, but you can click on this and show them an example of how it looks like and tell them that we're working on mapping all the academic articles um, into Wikidata and it helps us to show connections and doing so much cooler stuff than uh, what, what um, Google Scholar can show us for a specific researcher again, in a visualized and fun way, all based on Wikidata queries. Um, and the beauty of openness is the fact that the Wikidata is open is that external parties are already using Wikidata to create all sorts of apps. So there is no presentation that I give to stakeholders that I don't mention Histopedia. Um, again, this is a UK uh, invention. Um, and it's a, an external tool that allows us to, to really very simply, without the need to know queries or anything, just know, um, explore timelines, right? It creates timelines. I think here I did Italian artists or something of the sort. And it's just visual, it's fun, and it's changing the way we can teach history or the history of art, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really powerful, especially for I would say K to 12, but not only that, right? But this is something that we can explore with kids even. We don't need to, to teach them queries when they're very, very small. We can just give them Histropedia for fun. Um, Crotus is the same, the same idea. It's a, um, just a tool that allows you to, to navigate art. And I think this also shows people the potential. As Platypus um, is something that was invented by a PhD student from Germany, and he created this. Um, he's a, a computer science student um, dealing with natural language processing NLP, and he created this um, this tool that you can speak to. So I spoke in a natural voice, right, to the computer, and I asked, "Who's Luke Skywalker's dad?" The tool transcribed what I said and then gave me the answer based on Wikidata. So this this shows people um, the beginning of the potential that Wikidata has. And of course, not only that, but Siri, Alexa, and many other AI-based agents are using Wikidata to give answers. So in a world, this brings us to the, to the again, this brings us to why um, I was asked to, to speak here. And I want to tell you a bit about what I do if, if we still have time. Do I have five more minutes, Liana? Yes, five more minutes. Awesome. So it's, it's not going to take long. I'm just going to say that um, there have been, uh, as I said, early adopters all over the world um, ex experimenting with Wikidata in the classroom, trying to, to uh, really bring to the classroom the potential that Wikidata has as a learning platform. And um, really, we're just beginning. And um, I'll just say that 
educators have been using wikis for years now, right? And research actually shows us that Wikipedia is the best web to tool, one of the best web to platforms to gain skills. Um, we've been using it mainly to help people improve their knowledge consumption, to help them create knowledge, and you know, with it, improve all types of capacities. And it also uh, has been used to do research. And you know, working with Wikipedia, not Wikidata, has created all these, has helped students improve all these skills. And students say that it really improves their engagement. It creates a positive learning experience. It, it's doing something that matters, et cetera, et cetera. All of this you know. I think what Wikidata adds to this picture is data literacy. And data literacy is not just one thing. It's a um, different researchers have this in different ways or kind of um, gave it different um, meaning. But for me, it's a set of, of skills. And when I talk about data literacy, I talk, for instance, about how we model things or thinking about modeling or the ontological parts of Wikidata is one aspect of it. Another aspect is how do we prep the, um, our, what's called data wrangling, right? How do we prepare material in order to upload it to Wikidata? How, how do we clean up data sets, et cetera? How do we know if data verifiability is another? How do we verify the information, et cetera, et cetera? How do we know if it's complete? Um, so what have I been, have I been doing in Israel? So there are two different models. One is what I called alternative assessment, just like in Wikipedia. Um, there have been different types of um, courses at university where uh, lecturers gave their students some kind of Wikidata uh, presentation and in, in some cases they did some kind of project but it was a small part of the course. Um, I just recently did this. These are, this is a collaboration between um, the Israeli Authority of um, Antiquities um, and the Bar Ilan University and the Israeli Authority of Antiquities had these word files with um, historic buildings in, in um, Old Akko, which is a city near Haifa in, in Israel. And we help, the students are now having a seminar in which they need to take these um, word file and convert them into Wikidata in order to help preserve, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just an example of what you can do in alternative um, assessment. The second model is when Wikidata becomes the main assessment and I have opened an academic course last year, it was 2018, after I've been um, experimenting with Wikidata in the classroom since I think it was 2014, 2015 when I first started. This is the first course. Um, it's focusing on, um, the first part of it is focusing on Wikipedia and the second part on Wikidata. I think it's the first course in the world uh, to feature Wikidata in that sense, and I'm hoping to see many more coming in the coming years. But this is an actual elective approved by the rector's office at the Tel Aviv University, so for me it's a big deal. The next step for me is basically creating a completely Wikidata focused course, so not even uh, mentioning, well may, maybe mentioning Wikipedia, but not focusing on Wikipedia not doing half-half, but focusing completely on it. And this is hopefully going to happen in 2020, 2021 academic year. Um, this year, I'm taking my Wikidata course and I'm creating a hybrid course, uh, if that makes sense to everyone. So it's going to be mostly online and then only some sessions are going to be in class. Um, five sessions are out of 14 are going to be in class. And um, that's what I'm doing with, with this course. Uh, the students basically have a, um, a Wikidata, um, um, I would say project. They can take anything um, they want, any theme they want. They need to create a query. 
see the results, improve the data, and then do the query again to see it improved and visualize it in, in some way. So an example of that could be, let's take all the women um, who are um, um, academic um, staff at, at uh, a specific faculty, see how many of them we have on Wikidata, see who's missing, add the information, and then um, do the query again and visualize it in a, in a way that, that could be a project. So I'm hoping that's giving you some kind of um, an idea of what, what could be done in the classroom, um, that there are different ways of doing it, not just one way. And I would just mention that I'm uh, currently doing, as I said, my PhD on researching Wikidata as a learning platform. Um, I'm in the middle, kind of. I finished the data collection phase and moving to data analysis. And at the end of the month, I'm going to publish the first academic article about Wikidata and its importance to educators. So that could be another resource you use. Um, there are around 120 Wikidatans that participated in this research. And yeah, in the coming years, I'll, I'll release um, <laughs> some, uh, some more data about it. Yeah, to sum up, um, there are lots of potential to Wikidata, but also many challenges. And I think every challenge is a, basically a learning opportunity. We just need to know how to sell it. My best advice to, to people who actually try to incorporate it in their own context is to go for the low hanging fruits. So first try to work with computer science, digital humanities departments, data science, work with libraries and GLAMs because they're really into it. And finally, uh, tap into the open education community that's around you because Wikidata is an OER, an open educational resource, and um, many educators who are already doing open education might be interested in that. Um, that's it. Um, innovate and, and share, please share your experiences. Thank you, Shani. That was great. Um, Maybe we have time for one question because we, we do want to leave time for Andrews, who's our next speaker. Do we have one question? If not, then we can move on to Andrews Larty from Ghana. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Philip. Um, hello, everyone. And I hope everyone is fine. Um, that is a great presentation by Shani, and um, I'm really impressed and looking forward to um, collaborating on this. So I also go for it to talk about the my project or the projects that is currently that I'm currently working on as a project manager with other community members uh, in Ghana. That is Open Foundation West Africa, and then the Wikimedia community. So um, this, the name of the project is Growing Open and Eco-Friendly Skills for the Youth. Uh, we are the team that won the Wikimedia Education Greenhouse um, uh, grants yeah, for implementing a, a project in a rural area um, using Wikimedia Education as the basis. So what our project, I'll, I'll, I'll go straight to what our project actually does. Um, so the impact we want to achieve is that we want to improve employment, entrepreneurship and higher education opportunities for the youth in Ghana. And we also want to improve community nutrition and agricultural practices. So we realize that uh, most people within the um, most youth within the central region of Ghana um, usually have uh, one-way meals or one-way diet. And we realize that nutrition, nutrition is also an important factor in every child or every youth development. Uh, we also realize that uh, skills acquisition or skills, let's say um, skills such as project management or skills that individuals can work with and that is to create employment and also if they find themselves belonging to an organization will also lead to the growth of the organization are lacking within these areas. 
So we thought of the role that Wikimedia Education plays um, plays globally all in, in different uh, scenarios and combine that with skills acquisition because one when you look at certain uh, when you look at Wikimedia education project you get to realize that um, even contributing uh, content of, onto Wikipedia learning from Wikipedia and other Wikimedia sister project it's um, is a skill that requires you to actually be able to manage a project to be able to um, to achieve the goal of you contributing to such a platform. So we integrated that with the fact that the community needs, um, as in nutrition, good nutrition to also uh, be able to um, lead to community development. So the impact, just as I stated, the impact we want to create is to improve employment, entrepreneurship and higher education opportunities for youth in Ghana and improve community nutrition and cultural practices. Um, some, some of the outcomes we are looking forward to achieving is that we want to increase the participation of women in education and economy since uh, more often than not, women within the central region. Um, well, I see, I'll, I'll put it this way. Um, there's a saying that the woman's place is in the kitchen. So most of the time we, you realize that most of the women, they don't attain higher education and they might go to primary and junior high school, but, not, but then may not continue to senior high school or tertiary, tertiary institutions. Um, they may get pregnant along the lines, uh, along the way, or they may be married off to other people. So we want to create this opportunity so that we have more women participating in this project and uh, they will gain certain skills that will enable them to one, um, also create jobs for themselves um, want to attain higher education and then through that it also impact their their children when they give birth to them. And another outcome that we're also looking forward to having is I want to improve documentation of nutrition and agricultural practices for community development in local languages on Wikimedia project. Uh, we also want to improve access to nutritious food at Heritage School which is the school that we are implementing in this project at in uh, the project is being implemented in the central region of Ghana specifically at Heritage Academy School and um, we also want to in increase the awareness of the importance of growing and eating locally sourced food within the community um, another outcome that we also considering is that we want to improve access to participatory learning experiences experiences for the youth in the sense that if um, the you take part in um, the workshops or the programs that we have structured for them, then through that, they also gain skills. Uh, we know that most of them, although um, those along the coast are into fishing, but then those in the inlands, where Ejimako is also pretty much in the inlands, uh, do farming. So we want to and we want to use what they are familiar with to, to engage them in the project. That is why we're also considering a school farm. Yeah, um, most of the activities, uh, so we have about four activities that we want to engage them in. And um, that is the training and mentoring pro, um, components on secular economy and free knowledge concepts. Uh, we are engaging with 30 students and we are hoping that we have about 55% um, female participation. Currently, um, we are on track to achieving this goal because majority of the students, uh, about 18, 19 students are females currently. Uh, we also um, have three hours of training for teachers and then we have an ongoing support to ensure that they can help students' efforts and learn from the training program. So we have two teachers, two teachers from the school who are going to be uh, mentors and coaches to the, to the students whilst on this project. Um, we're also going to have students, we want students to gain skills that will help them to build a community garden and also support with the canteen that we established by the, can, canteen, uh, by the uh, school farm. 
And then we're also going to have a library and then a common learning area. So that it becomes um, an environment where the students feel that one, uh, although we are contribut contributing on the farm and learning whatever that we are learning on the farm, we also have a space to eat and a space to also learn. And through that, students can do their homeworks, they can contribute to other Wikimedia projects, they'll be able to uh, work together on other projects uh, while they are within that part particular space. Since usually when they go home, um, they are left to themselves and most of them wonder about um, engaging in uh, social vices or not even um, learning while they are home. So we want to curb all those kind of things that happens with a kid. Um, and the final thing we want to also engage them in is that at least one event that connects students to opportunities for higher education, employment, or entrepreneurship. So we hope that through the activities that we are going to have, uh, for example, okay, we have, you go to the farm, we all work on going our farm, and then we also go back to learn whatever that we are learning. Uh, skills such as, uh, so this is the project that we are all managing. What we are working on is a participatory model. So we engage the students at every level of what we are doing, including planning, strategy, and implementation. And through that, the students are able to acquire project management skills. And with this, they, uh, they become employable, one. And then they can also set up their own businesses either they set up um, uh, other farms, um, they also lead other education projects. Um, yeah, we, they are open to actually do things that they want to do with the skills that they acquire from this particular project. As it is right now, um, we've conducted, um, we've, as it is right now, we've engaged with the school and the students and the teachers and other stakeholders. And um, we are, uh, since this uh, January to March, first week in March is a dry season, we are currently um, working on land preparation that is clearing the lands and also, um, and also preparing the best uh, for the students to start uh, there are projects here. We are currently in talks with the students and the teachers um, to train them on how they are going to contribute content of Wikipedia, Wikimedia, and how they are going to use um, as resources from the QAs that we install in the, at the institution to research on the, pro, on, on, the, on the product that they are going to grow. So right now we have four products that the students are going to grow. They are going to grow carrots, cabbage, shallots, and then green pepper. So they've all been grouped. They've all been placed in their groups and they know what they have They have to do. Um, now, what we expect that this project does is that um, through, through their engagement in this particular project, they are also able to incorporate one, a circular econo economy um, Concepts, for example, if they are producing, if they are um, the produce that you get from the farm, um, how then do they find ways of uh, dealing with waste? So uh, one of the ways that we'll do is that uh, we'll do composting for for most of the um, the waste that they will get from from the farm, and they also think about uh, not using plastics. Yeah, uh, they also not think about using plastics for the project, so we'll try to get them um, uh, eco-friendly materials for them to use for the project. And we also encourage them to engage more people from the community to uh, take part in the project because we are going to open the school farm to the members of the community um, in the next phase of the project after May. Um, currently, this is uh, what the Ghost Project is working on. Now, the, with our integration with Wikimedia and other Wikimedia sister projects, is that now because we have QWICs, um, 
uh, installed at the institution, that is where they are going to make their references from uh, that will guide them on what they are to plan. However, along the lines, um, they are working with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. And then we also get in GIZ as partners and, and then school farms. And then they will advise on how to uh, go about the planting and the processing. So with this uh, kind of partnership, we hope that the students who, while they are connecting with this institution, will also get job opportunities along the line um, for this particular project. Yeah, so um, thank you guys. I think this is uh, how far I can go with the presentation. Um, I'll look, I look forward to more questions so that I can answer specifically on these areas. Yeah. Thank you, Andrews. Yeah. Do we have any questions for Andrews? Okay, and um, let me say this. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, Philip, uh, I, I, I think I missed out on uh, one or two things with how we are integrating Wikimedia uh, projects into this, uh, into this program. So. Yeah. Please go. Um, yeah. So. We want to we want to be able to project the cultural differences in how uh, different um, regions across the globe actually um, engage in their farming practices. So that is why we are going to document all of our projects on Wikiversity to say, okay, growing a community farm within the um, in Africa, maybe tropical Africa, within the western um, uh, western parts of Africa, and specifically Ghana Central Region. Uh, for people to know what we are doing and then uh, there might be different ways that we also uh, process some of our food because right on the field or on the farm we also um we are going to have uh, dry food processing uh, i don't know how it, maybe different parts of the world also have different ways that they go about these kind of processes so we also put that information there and then while the students are contributing to these contents and learning from other wikimedia sources when they realize that some of the information that when they realize that information there is also kind of different from in other parts of the world. Then you also contribute content or data to that. And uh, we're also looking at contributing most of our content to Wikidata so that um, we'll be able to share uh, cultural differences or similarities with people across the world. Yeah, so these are some of the areas. And then uh, most of the content you will get, uh, for example, like the pictures and photos will also be uploaded to Wiki Commons. Um, so that students will know what it is. Uh, students will also know how to contribute to the platform and other people across the world will also know what is happening with this particular project. Yeah. Uh, in the future, we are looking forward to scaling up, scaling to, um, as an expanding the farm. Uh, currently we are, we are on a, on a one acre plot of land. So we are going to scale to two or three acres. And then we're also going to scale in other parts of the community and then within other regions in Ghana. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, hello. Hi. Um, yeah. yeah, hello. Uh, hello. Thank you for the, for the interesting presentation. Uh, from what I get uh, from, from your uh, presentation so far, I can see that your project is also more of an empowerment project for women uh, in Ghana, right? Um, yes. I just wanted to ask about your part, your institutional partnerships, especially because I see that there will be need for a lot of funding for your project. And I see, I can see that most of this can't be funded by Wikimedia in my experience. So I just wanted to ask if there are institutional partners that are joining in the empowerment aspect of your project. And also, I would like to know how Marja with Wikimedia is working. I know you said that uh, you're working with Kiwix to make the women to get their information from Wikipedia uh, uh, and things like that. Um, how is that going to happen? Like, do you have the Kiwix installed in like a public library uh, 
uh, institution or like a school or just the implementation of Kiwix? Okay. All right. Um, thank you for the question. So, um, hello? Yeah. Um, so, Obi, no, sorry. Um, some. Yeah. So, one, uh, let me answer the first one. Institu institutional partners. So, uh, strategic partners here. So, for example, um, with implementing the, the canteen and the library close to the farm, we are partnering with GIZs and um, to help to one either they will help us to put the structure up, or they will um, they will reach out to partners within their network to help us put the structure up. And um, in terms of um, seedlings and seeds, and um, we also we have also gotten in touch with uh, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. So we actually. Um, they are part of our stakeholders at every stakeholder meeting. They are part of it to advise us on um, what we are doing. And they have already, um, they have already committed to giving us seedlings and seeds for the project and also providing us with extension uh, service personnel to, uh, to be on the farm to supervise what is happening and also to move along with the students while they are going about their daily activities on the farm. Um, you also get to realize that at the end of the of the project, um, at the end of the project, which will be in May, um, the vegetables would have grown and would have the food. So when we get there, have for, for the harvest, we will give a percentage to the school, and then a percentage will also be up for um, purchase by uh, community members. Uh, that will, in order for us to make money to also push back into the project so that uh, this project becomes sustainable. That's why we're also implementing the uh, dry fruits. So in, in the next phase of the project, we'll be introducing some fruits uh, that will, when we dry and we process and we package uh, neatly, we'll be able to sell to other, um, to other people to make money to support this project. Um, and we also have, uh, in the future, we are looking at partnering with uh, General Electric to support us with um, better irrigation system and for us to build a greenhouse to house this particular project uh, so that we, uh, we can uh, expand and also um, like reduce the losses we'll make from pest infest infestation or any of these other things. Um, so we have partners, institutional partners who are going to support us um, at these various points uh, outside of Wikimedia Foundation supporting this particular uh, project. And now the second question is mm, how our project like in terms of Wikimedia Foundation. So now you guys realize that everything we are, everything we are doing on the field, um, although it's, you realize that um, most of the things we are doing on the field needs documentation. Now to know different practices that is going on, that happens across different farms or uh, different parts of even Ghana alone, like even Ghana alone, different parts of the country have different farm practices and different knowledge. Now, um, in terms of the different, different, different species of the types of crops that we are going to grow and how well they grow, these are, these are information that we are also uh, feeding into the Wikimedia project. In terms of QX, QX, we call it one, we have a QX, we are going to use a QX plug uh, that we install in the school. Uh, so we have the school's library currently um, that we are going to install the QX there. And then when we have a club session, students are able to access information about Okay, these are the various crops. These are the crops that are growing. Uh, this, uh, when it comes to fertilizer, these are the types of fertilizer we have to use. Or these, so they will be able to access various information. And then, let's say, for example, if they want to also, how is processing of food or let's say drying of these particular food done in different parts of the world? They also get those kind of information on there. And then, if they realize that there are some information that, let's say. Um, for example, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture will have some information about food crops within their databases, which has not been uh, fed into Wikipedia. And then maybe that will be a content that is lacking on the QS platform. Now we have, we have made provision for the student to access uh, the internet and or put all their contributions onto Wikiversity and onto Wikipedia uh, when they come across anything that they have to contribute onto the platform. 
So this is how the QX, we are using a QX block. We are going to use a QX block. This is how the QX will, how QX will integrate into the project. Um, and was that clear enough, um, Sam? Yeah, thank you for the response. Sounds like a very extensive project. Good luck. Yeah, thank you, yeah. All right, I think this is all the time we have because it's been one and a half hours. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Um, and especially thanks to Shani and Andrews for giving these great talks and presentations. Um, I hope you had fun and learned something new maybe. Um, and I hope to see you all next time, which will be in roughly two months from now, so uh, late March. And uh, if there are any last uh, words or <laughs> last, um, yeah, statements from anyone, now's the time. One last statement for me, if you um, are interested in speaking or uh, want to recommend somebody to speak at our next open meeting, please um, send that my way. We're always looking for um, interesting people to talk about their projects. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe um, you can drop your email. Yes, I will drop my email in the chat. Thank you all for also um, joining in on this call today. I think this is my first time on the on this community chat, so I'll continue to always be on it now that I know and also contribute my uh, my quota to whatever development that is happening within the space. i also like to say a big thank you to the Media Foundation for creating a platform and opportunity for everyone to, uh, for people with different ideas to uh, work on them. Yeah, and thanks to the community for also being, always re being readily available to support anyone and everyone for anything. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.